Hello and welcome to this Control Web Panel tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new Shoutcast module in the CWP Admin Panel. Shoutcast allows you to easily create, manage, and scale your online radio stations. And CWP's new Shoutcast Manager module is designed so that you can choose and manage the different streaming engines that CWP has. To access the Shoutcast Manager, go to your navigation bar and simply type in Shoutcast. And this will reveal both the old and new Shoutcast Managers. Otherwise, under the navigation menu, you can go to the plugins submenu and select Shoutcast Manager New. And this opens the new Shoutcast Manager module. When you're first getting started, you'll see this message that says that Shoutcast Streaming Server is not installed. So to install it, simply click Install Shoutcast Server. Once it's installed, we can choose or manage the different streaming search engines that CWP offers, including Shoutcast Server, Icecast Server, and Liquid Sound Auto DJ. In the main window, you'll see tabs for Shoutcast Server and Icecast Server. Under the Shoutcast Server, you have subtabs for Servers, Packages, and Options. Under the Servers tab, to add a new server, click plus Add Shoutcast Server. Here you can assign the Shoutcast Server to one of your users, and you can select a package. Currently, we have only the default. We can choose a port and a password, and install. And this adds our first Shoutcast server. We can add as many other Shoutcast servers as we want by assigning it to a different port number. Eventually, when you have many Shoutcast servers, you can set the table to display up to 100 different entries. And if there's a specific server you're searching for, you can type that in the search field. Within the table, you can see at a glance the status of each service. And to launch the service, you can just press the green play arrow to start the service. And the animated graphic lets you know that the service is currently running. To stop the service, you can click the stop icon, or you can click the restart button to restart the service as well. Under the actions column, we have options for config, edit, and delete. By clicking the config button, we can change the admin password or assign a user password and either cancel or update. We can also choose to edit this service. And here we can change the package that the user subscribes to. Currently, we only have the one default package or we could delete the service, in which case we'll receive a confirmation asking us if we're sure we want to delete. We'll just cancel that for now. Under the Packages tab, we can specify the various characteristics of the packages that can be assigned to a Shoutcast user. So here we have the original default package. So in order to add a new package, we'd click plus Add Package Server. Here we could give our new package a name. We'll call this one Premium. We'll give it a maximum number of listens. We'll give this one 200. And the max bitrate is the audio quality that the audio will play back at when streamed. And click Create. Now that we have two different packages, we can go back to our servers. And if we want to, we can edit the package on this one. And now we have different packages to assign. Rather than just the default, we can also offer this user the premium and update. Going back to our Packages tab, we can add as many packages as we like. And again, expand our table to show up to 100 entries search for specific packages, and under the Actions column, we can edit these packages as necessary, and either cancel or update, or delete any packages if we need to remove those. Next, we'll take a look at the Options tab, and here you can check mark this box if you want Shoutcast to be enabled in the User panel, and then we can specify the port range where the user server will run. In this case, we have it set from port 15,000 to 16,000. Please remember after setting these ports that you make sure to open this port range within your firewall. If you make any changes, you can save the user configurations, or if you need to, you can uninstall Shoutcast, in which case you'll be asked if you want to delete only the server or delete all, including the user's packages and the server. In this case, we'll just keep that. And next, let's take a look at the Icecast server. And again, if we're just starting out, we'll see the message here that Icecast streaming server is not installed. So in order to install that, we'll click Install Icecast server. And we see in the sidebar the version of Icecast server that's installed with an option to uninstall it if we choose to. Up at the top, we can navigate to the Icecast server tab. And again, we have sub tabs here for servers, packages, and options. Under the servers tab, we can add a new Icecast server by clicking plus add Icecast server. Here we can assign this to our user, select a specific IP or assign it to all, choose a package. And currently we only have the current default package choose a port and set a password and install. 
And similar to the shoutcast server, we can have as many icecast servers as we want, just assigned to a different port. So again, we would assign the user, the IP, choose our package, and we see that the port has automatically defaulted to 17001. Enter our password and install. And now we have two icecast servers set up. Under the panel, we can see at a glance the status of this service. To start it, we can press the green play icon. And if we wish, we can either stop that service or restart it. Under the actions column, we have options to either configure, edit, or delete this server. In the config action, we can update the server, which is already at its current version because we just installed it. We can also edit our package. And here we can select our packages. Currently, we still only have the default and either update or cancel. Or we can delete this server and we'll be presented with a confirmation. So in this case, we'll just cancel because we're going to keep this for now. Under the packages sub tab here, we can add new packages. So here again, we'll call this one premium. And we can give this a maximum number of listens, maximum bit rate, and maximum number of sources. And create a new package. And now when we go back to our servers, we can edit the package here. And as well as the default, we now also have our premium package that we can assign. So we'll go ahead and update that. Also within the table, we can quickly access the Icecast server admin panel. And here you can access the administration tab, server status, or version. Next, we'll take a look at the Icecast options tab. And we can check this box to enable Icecast in the user panel. And then set a port range where the user servers will run. In this case, set from 17,000 to 18,000. If we make any changes, we can save those configurations or choose to uninstall Icecast, in which case we can choose to either delete only the server or delete all users, packages, and the server. It's important to note that you must be sure to open this port range in your firewall. Next, we'll take a look at the Liquid Sound Auto DJ. If it's not already installed, you'll see a blue icon here that says Install Now, in which case you can just click that and that will install the Auto DJ service. Once it's installed, you can click the red button to uninstall it. Once installed, this is managed from the CWP user panel, and we'll discuss that in further detail in another tutorial. For more information, please consult the following links. We hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for using CWP.